welcome to my office that is also a guest room. I am not here to look pretty today, so this is me in my fully natural glory. Okay, not fully natural, but you get the idea. I am here today to talk to you about how I write books, so yeah, you're just gonna have to deal with what this looks like. You will likely hear a frequent noise in the background. That's it, uh, because I have workmen at my house and that is a staple gun and you're just gonna have to deal with that as well. You might also hear my dogs bark and sorry. This is the best I could do. I don't have time to write something up, but I wanted to give you guys a really needy, helpful uh, post for, for NaNoWriMo. So let's get started. How Susan writes a book. Three phases that I go through, that's six. Three phases that I go through when I am planning a novel. Um, I start with input, creative input for the well. That is usually music, graphics, reading, watching movies, all sorts of things that help stimulate ideas. Then when I feel like the, the cup runneth over with ideas, I sit down and I start to brainstorm. Brainstorming happens typically on my whiteboard or it happens in a notebook or the game-changing addition that I added to my repertoire during Sightwitch um, is index cards. And of course, the third step in my three-phase cycle is drafting. But the most important phase of all of that is the central one, the second one, brainstorming. The reason for this is because if I go into writing and I don't have a plan, I just waste time. Um, I'm not efficient with my writing. It takes me twice, three times, four times as long to write a scene versus if I had just sat down and really thought about what was coming. And also, I am someone who needs like an ending to shoot for, and not just an ending, I need... Kate Elliott described it, it's the mountain range that forms islands above the ocean, so I need to see those islands in order to get to the end. And the best way to do that is to brainstorm two kind of levels to planning, right? There's the whole book, which is very macro, and then there's the micro planning, which is scene level stuff, like figuring out dialogue and the actual events that happen in a scene. When it comes to the big stuff, the macro, um, I work a lot either on this whiteboard or in my rocket book or just a regular notebook. A lot of what I do when I'm brainstorming macro is just mind mapping. It's really just like writing down a scene idea. So let's take Sightwitch as our example. I point to this because this is the first draft of Sightwitch. So let's say I know that the very first scene is Ryber with her sisters, Ryber at the convent. I know at some point that I wanted to go into the mountain. At some other point, I need her to search the crypt with Rook. So maybe I, I have these scene ideas, right? They're just broad, vague scene ideas, events that I know need to happen. But I don't exactly know what order they're in yet, and I haven't quite figured out how my character gets where they're gonna get. And so throughout the drafting process, from before I begin until the very end, I make these mind maps and then I will go through and I will make numbers, I'll order them and I'll be like, maybe it should go in this way. Mm, no, I don't like that, let's rearrange. Do this way. And I will just keep working that way until I figured out the order of the scenes. What might happen, of course, is that when I get into draft, this isn't what happens at all. But without these signposts, I don't know where to go. So this is a key part of my process. One of the things that I discovered when I was working on Wind Witch and super struggling was the book Anatomy of Story by John Truby, which I talk about all the time. As a Christmas gift for Alex Bracken last year, I had these magnetic uh, plot points made that are Truby's plot points. There's 22 steps in his plots and I had them made on magnets for her for Christmas, and then, bless my husband, for my birthday, he <laughs> went and made me the same thing. So now I have a set too. And now I like to use those, especially if I'm getting stuck in the muddy middle, I will look at Truby um, and see kinda how he sort of fits plot together, and what I have, you know, like, 
this would totally be considered, you know, the inciting incident. Ally, allies, maybe, maybe one of these. First revelation. But yeah, I'll sit there and literally think just like that. Like move around the magnets, see how the story lays out. The nice thing about a whiteboard is that nothing is permanent, nothing feels like you're, you're locked in and you can constantly change and be flexible. Now, throughout the brainstorming process, when I'm mapping out big things and trying to feel my way through the plot, I also am using this digital recorder and my phone a lot. This is the big secret thing I was gonna try to do in a big workshop, but alas, that fell through. So now I'm just gonna I'm just gonna share my big secret for free. Lucky you. I shared a quote earlier this year from Holly Black about how you can't write a book if you're not immersed in it. And her analogy was if you're going swimming and the water is cold, if you keep hopping in and out, the water is always gonna be cold. But if you get in and you stay in, eventually you get acclimated and the water feels warm. The same is true for drafting a novel. That was what I discovered when I was working on Sight Witch, um, and it worked again when I did Blood Witch, and it is working again as I work on The Executioner's 3. Immersion. The thing about immersion, though, is let's say you're eating and breathing and thinking about your book constantly. It is, it's like all you're doing. There are so many ideas that you will have that you lose. Think about all those ideas you have in the shower or all those ideas you have while driving, or all those ideas you have just while you're like putting on your socks. What if you were actually able to capture all of those ideas? All of those snippets of dialogue, all of those little scene nuggets, all of those clever retorts, if you could. And of course, why can't you? If you're like me, then you have a lot of those ideas, and the more immersed you are, the more ideas you have. So the first step, is to train yourself to notice that you're having them. The second step is to start to capture them. And the way that I capture them is with this digital recorder and my phone. The digital recorder is faster, um, but it can be a little bit messier because then you have to play back and listen to what you recorded. But if you're driving or if you're maybe in the shower or you're walking your dogs like I do and you have all these ideas, this is a very easy way to just start recording teenagers with their loud mufflers. This is a good way to start recording and immediately capture those ideas. Um, I get so many, you know, clever dialogue ideas when I'm not in a position to write it down, so, and I know I'm gonna forget it, so into the digital recorder it goes. Or if I am in a position, I'll just put it directly into my phone, um, into an app called Simple Note. So for example, this is Simple Note. It has no bells and whistles and it syncs across all my different devices, which I really like. Uh, and I just put in ideas. So this is a scene idea. Freddy goes to take key card and he's like, yeah, no way I'm letting you go in there alone. And it's a whole scene idea with some dialogue. Um, this is actually an entire scene I wrote out on here while I was in a waiting room at a doctor's office. Uh, other things are just like single lines. But yeah, there's a lot of ideas in this one file and I've only been working on this book for a month. Now what do I do with all of that stuff once I have it? This is the game changer. So you take all of those ideas. If you're like me, you will have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of ideas before you even start drafting. Some of them will just be a line. For example, it will just be the word tremors. What does that even mean? I don't know, but it went in my stack of cards. Other things will be really specific. The opening lines of Sight Witch. You don't remember me, do you? I'm familiar though. I saw it in the way you squinted your eyes at me when I walked into the cleaved man. Yeah, I filled the front and the back of that and that is almost word for word exactly what's in Sight Witch. I will share parts of these cards so you can actually get a good feel for that. But this right here is the first draft of Sight Witch. So by taking all of those ideas, all of those things that I captured on my digital recorder, all those things that I put into my phone, and then adding them to note cards, I was able to slowly flesh out an entire book. If I'm at my desk, I always have a stack of index cards right there for the grabbing, and I immediately write down the idea on it and add it to a stack. I have these nice little carriers 
across my desk. Um, for Blood Witch, there was one for each char for each character. So when I would have an idea for Agewin, it would go in the Agewin box, and then periodically I would go through and sort them all into a cohesive order. The cool thing about having it on the note cards is you can move it around. So let's say you have an idea, and you're like, that comes way later in the book. Old me would have just been like, that's not the scene I'm thinking about right now. Cool brain, put that on hold, we'll get back to it later. And then we would never get back to it later because I wouldn't remember. New me knows that you have to immediately write that stuff down. So, for example, let's say I had an idea that needed to go way late in the book, which is a line of dialogue I wrote down. It's him, isn't it? The paladin of air. The rook nods because I would need to write that out. He's a bird. He can't really nod. Well, I guess he can, but you know what I mean. Uh, and his memories are in there. I just need to unlock them. She looks at her diary. All right. So that's, you know, something that actually ends up in the book probably around three quarters of the way in. But I had that idea way sooner, so I wrote it down. And so you get more and more and more of these cards the deeper and deeper you get into your story. And once your brain starts to recognize you're actually going to write this stuff down, I swear, it really starts to provide boom, boom, boom. Idea, idea, idea. A lot of the ideas, of course, won't make it into the book. So these are all ideas that I had while drafting Blood Witch, book four in the series, uh, but that didn't end up going in the book. These are the ones that I'm not sure what I'm going to do with, but I don't want to throw them away. They still might be useful. It's a series, right? These are the ones that I'm like, yes, these will definitely be useful in book four. I just couldn't find a place for them in, or book five. I just couldn't find a place for them in Blood Witch. Because I know you want to see it and you're curious. This is Blood Witch right there. So compare that to the size of Sight Witch, draft one, Blood Witch, draft one, or draft zero, I guess we could call it. It's a much more complicated book with a lot more characters and it's just longer. So lots of index cards to fill out that book. With Sight Witch, there were probably maybe not as many cards as this that didn't go in, but a good chunk. It was probably like two thirds. The same amount of cards that just got discarded and not used. Does that mean that they were bad? No. In fact, a lot of the ideas I couldn't have led to other ones without them. And I'm glad that I captured them because again, most of the ideas, over half, still got used and ended up being the first draft of Sight Witch. So again, if you look at the little bits that I share, you can compare that to the final version of the book and see just how much actually did end up going verbatim or very close to in the final draft. There you have it. That is essentially how I assemble a book. I realize that it is rough and dirty, and one day I will give a very detailed, insightful, written explanation of all of this. Um, that is just not today. Draft zero, capturing ideas, learning to recognize when you're having them and to immediately write them down before they fly away, and then transferring those onto index cards so that you can rearrange and slowly assemble a book just from all of those tiny little captured ideas. It not only made the drafting process so much easier for me, but it made it so much faster and more fun because I just never really left the book and I knew that my brain was going to continue and continue and continue to provide and so I was able to just really sink into the story and connect with it and I've said this before but Sight Witch was one of the most was at the time the most joyous experience I'd ever had writing. Blood Witch beat that and right now I'm working on this work in progress The Executioner's 3 and it is even more joyful and wonderful and I just love every second that I am there and yeah I'm just capturing all the ideas and then slowly transferring them into um, Scrivener and turning that into an actual draft. I feel I should mention this is not a magic bullet. There is no magic bullet. Writing is still hard and it takes time and you have to sit at your desk and you have to do it every day. Um, but this is the closest to a magic bullet I have ever found. So I really hope that it transforms your writing life in the way that it has transformed mine. It requires some getting used to and there's a learning curve and of course you still have to fill in gaps you know when a scene card says only tremors okay well what does that actually look like so there are definitely still some scenes that you have to sit down and think about and you get stuck um, 
and I still hit writer's block, right? I have my three phases, but at the end of the day, yeah, this is the closest I have ever found to a magic bullet. So I hope it helps you, my friends, in the way that it has helped me. And happy writing.